Hi, welcome to Web Pixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon and I'm joined by our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hey, Adam. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, so we were hoping that this episode would be taking place as a kind of outside broadcast and I would be sitting in New Orleans, undoubtedly with something cool and fizzy to drink, um, whilst I discuss what was going on at the annual dive show, dive trade show, DEMA, which is, would normally be happening around about now. Um, obviously, thanks to COVID, that's not happening. But we thought it would be interesting to, to discuss what underwater photographers might be talking about round about now in terms of new gear. So, mm. Alex, what do you think? What what do you think would be causing well, the buzz on the DEMA show at the moment? Ball time. Yeah, so, yeah, so Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Fun episode. But I do think it's really important because I think DEMA does set a big agenda within the underwater photography community. Yep. You know, it attracts a lot of the movers and shakers from the world of underwater imaging, yep. both manufacturers and the photographers, yep. puts them all together in a room, courtesy of, 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 of wet pixel, <laughs> uh, catch them at the, at the, yeah. at the wet pixel dive photo guide um, image makers party. Yeah. And, and then um, I think there's a real buzz around floor. And obviously all the manufacturers turn up at DEMA with their new products wanting them to be the buzz thing and yep. it's always very interesting what the community is actually talking about yep. so um you know it's very difficult to sort of get this right but i think you know we can certainly i think look at housings look at strobes look at optics look at accessories and go through those and talk about the things that we think will be creating the buzz on the floor at dema so yep. housing wise i think it's a very exciting time with the the real the rise of really high quality mirrorless cameras, particularly yep. the full frame ones from Sony and Canon that have come out recently. And, and, and Nikon has obviously got new versions of theirs as well. Yep. And I think there'll be a lot of excitement about the Nikon ones fit into the housings that already exist. So that's kind of a bit less exciting from underwater type point of view. The new um, the, the the Z6 and Z7 Mark IIs. But the the Sony um, R5, have I got that right? I'm always... uh, the Sony... Um... A7, A7S3. Oh, no, I meant the Canon. Sorry, I got Sorry, it. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I was so, talking about, not the, the Sony. Canon, the Canon R series certainly are, are, are a huge deal. Um, yeah. And, and, and will be very exciting. Obviously, new from, from last year's DEMA. Um, I actually was on a, a call with CCAM earlier today, as, as for example, um, and they're, they're, they've launched a housing for it. Um, and, and I'm quite sure that we'd be seeing um, lots of people have announced housings for it. I mean, just the top of my head, I think the list includes, um, so you can mentioned before, Nauticam, Icolite, Aquatica. Um, I'm pretty sure Azotta have mentioned one. So so pretty much all of the manufacturers, all of the major manufacturers would be launching housings for the, for the new Sony um, A7S. Um, and this is the A7S III is the one that's 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 the big deal. Um, they're also all oh, sorry we were talking about Canons. So yes, it's the R5 is 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 yeah. the big deal. Um, the Canon R series. Um, it, it, I think Nordicam have got their housing out for that. They already. have like Icolite have one out for it as well. I've announced it. Aquatica I know are are, are planning to support it. So so they're um, in common with a lot of the. Um, both Canon and Nikon, they have um, converters which allow you to use conventional EF mount lens in Canon's case, um, in, in, in um, Nikon's case, F mount with the new mirrorless format, the Z and the, the R mm. format respectively. Um, and the majority of the housings that are coming out are supporting that. So, so for example, you know, the Nauticam, certainly Nauticam and Seacam, you can use both lens formats um, within the same housing. Um, so, but I, I'm and you're going to be running all those, you know, those official announcements on wetpixel.com anyway, aren't you? So yeah, we'll I mean, see. a lot of the official announcements are out already, but certainly as as models get officially released and we have pictures and so on and so forth, they'll get they'll get put out onto wetpixel. Yeah. So yeah. I think that would definitely be a big buzz on the floor. Sure. Is photographers realizing now that they may love their SLR, but the camera companies are putting all their development clearly into 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 mi the mirrorless equivalents of them yeah. and i think there'll be a lot of discussion is now the time to start moving over is it a, a, a generation or two down the line am i going to wait and see if my camera company produces a, a slr that has a lot of this new tech in or do i have to get yeah. into into a mirrorless version of it and i, I would think that would be a big talking point on the floor is are you ready to dump your d850 or canon you know 5d mark 4 or um, or whatever or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. 
to go into these in, into these things. The um, the interesting point was that certainly I had a very I had an opportunity to use the Z six and Z seven fairly early on, um, and I was I was very disappointed with the autofocus on it, um, particularly coming from the background. And the latest, so the the Z six and Z seven Mark twos, apparently they've done wonders with the autofocus. So a very very interesting time to me. And if that's the case, um, those certainly suddenly now become much more interesting. I think for underwater mm. use, um, mm. and certainly all the reports I've had from about the the R series, the Canon R series is is that it, you know it's it's a hell of a camera. So 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 exciting times. Obviously the housing manufacturers are going to be keeping up with that. Um, mm -hmm. The other one I think that's really exciting again specifically for underwater, but this time for filmmakers, the Sony A7S III. Um, it, it has low light capabilities. Well, I mean I'm going going to say when it says better than anybody else's but i don't know that but it has very good very good low light capability their advertising says it's better yes, than indeed yeah. yeah and 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 that being the case it should make it a really interesting camera for underwater filmmakers um, and again i think the housings that we'd be seeing at dima um, would reflect that that particular interest so so expect housings with the option of adding on uh, hdmi outs all the other stuff that you need as a filmmaker i think mm -hmm. that's very much would be would be something that we, we'd be we'd be seeing in new orleans as we speak yeah I think a bit off topic um, to jump from that, but there's been a lot of movement as well on on external monitors yep. um, for for things. I think that's kind of that would also be kind of wrapped up in that buzz. In that there's some really new tech 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 for for filmmaking. So I think I think housing the Atomos recorders particularly, although they're not unique, but they're they're the most common one. Um, obviously these allow with a lot of these cameras, um, the Panasonic S series as well. Now you can take ProRes RAW. On record it externally, um, and the, but in order to do that, you need an external gadget to do it. And housings for those external gadgets, for those external monitors, um, are, mm. are common. Are coming certainly Nauticam um, offer them. Um, I'm pretty sure Gates offer them. Um, Ccam are about to release one, um, and I'm sure that's Aquatica not. Aquatica has been quite big into making them as well in the past. Yeah, I think Aquatica do have an Atomos housing coming out. I'm not sure about that. Again, I'm sure. I'm sure that's something. Well, we're predicting the future, Adam. Yeah, so well, we are. We are crystal ball gazing. I, I would imagine most of them will be will be looking at housing the Atomos and NG5 um, in order to because that then allows obviously raw video for underwater use is quite useful because it allows you to color correct extensively um, and that's that's a it, it's a it adds to the to the to the workflow significantly but um, has significant advantages for underwater use yeah sure um, and I think that probably so I was going to say I think one housing that might get a bit of of, of fun interest. Is I, I saw. I mean, I've seen quite a few adverts for Sea Life. Um, yeah. You know, making a new iPhone housing. Yeah. And actually, you know, you know, the, the nice one of the nice things about the iPhones now is they've actually increased their water resistance. You know, to to come a little bit closer to some of the other phones out there, which makes me feel a little bit more confident about maybe getting a housing for it because I'm always going to have my phone with me on a trip. Yeah. And actually, knowing my phone is is waterproof for. 30 minutes at six meters means if I have a housing flood using my iPhone underwater, it's probably not going to kill my phone, which is obviously both very expensive and also important to me for doing everything else I want it on a trip, yeah. which would encourage me, I think, to maybe start wanting to use it underwater. So I'd definitely be quite curious about that as kind of a, a fun toy to add to my underwater photography arsenal is, is, a, is a nice iPhone housing. I kind of Always before, I wouldn't want to house my phone because my phone is my way to contact home when I'm in the field and, and do work and all those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, now the phone's actual, you know, at, you know, the iPhone 12s, the Apple's waterproofing is much, much better. I'd feel a lot more confident about putting it in a housing, I have to say. The, the cameras on them as well are, are getting increasing. I mean, they're computational cameras as opposed to sort of traditional cameras, but mm. but still the, the results are amazing. You know, they are getting really quite, so, so they're starting to get to a point where you know, you could probably achieve pretty significant results with them as well. Um, mm. I, I, I actually submitted to my agent this year the first for the first time photos taken with the phone. There you go. Um, I yeah. don't know actually whether they've been incept, accepted into the main stock. Um, I haven't actually double checked that. But you know, they. I, I think the you know the places you have you obviously have a phone everywhere with you. Yeah. You take photos, and not every usage needs a gazillion megapixels. Yeah. Just to go back to housings, though, you mentioned Sorry. the the new one from um, name's gone out of my head again. Um, sea Life. Sea Life. Um, yeah. And the other people to mention are, are the um, uh, Easy Dive as well. Have also got. Um, they. I know they've now got. Um, 
um, housings, well, we've had housings for a long time, but because they control the cameras through um, Wi-Fi, um, obviously theirs are compatible with with pretty much any camera actually, but in, pretty much any phone, but including the uh, the iPhone 12. So so yeah, I'm sure that you know the 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 advances in the in the phones themselves will 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 push us in that direction, um, similar to the mirrors um, issue. I know it sounds a bit strange to be so iPhone centric. But I have to say, if you go around Dima, if you can find an underwater photographer who doesn't have an eye, who has a, another type of phone other than an iPhone, you're doing pretty well. I think they are just, quite ubiquitous in our world. I think you've just doomed the comment section. In this, yeah, this well, it's, sorry for that. it's not that I'm, you know, um, particularly, but it's, I just see it that way. Anyway, um, let's move on to strobes. Let's talk about something else quick. <laughs> quickly, yeah, moving on quickly. So, so um, new strobes. I mean, I, I think that there's been. The, the, last the, year was kind of the year of the strobe. Wasn't it was it? year of the strobe. So, so last year we had announced. Um, so, the Retro Pro was announced at that point. Um, the um, C Cam C Flash 160 was announced, which was sort of that was a new announcement. Um, mm -hmm. And the other new, new two new announcements: the Isotta Flash and the CNC D3. And why is D3? And also, Icolite had their new yes. updated version of the DS1 161 with a new flash tube. Yeah. Yep. And um, there's one other, and and one underwater, their their That's strobe, right. which is is, got, is related to the C cam strobe, which I'd actually shot last summer. But I think we'd be going back to Dima now, where actually photographers have been out in the field a bit shooting those strobes. Yeah. And actually, it wouldn't be well, this manufacturer says that, and that manufacturer says this. Yep. I think the buzz on the floor would be actually photographers going, this strobe doesn't cut it in the field. This strobe is a it's wonder awesome. underwater. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah. I think that I think, the chat. And I think you know, they, there's been um, they, they a lot of them were announced at Dima, but hadn't really existed in the field. Exactly what you're saying, Alex. Yeah. And, and now they've been out there. And what was really nice to see from, from a personal perspective was people concentrating on top end, high power, high performance strobes that output a really good quality of lights. And in general, that was the general kind of gist of of the strobe revolution, if we can call it that. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it's a drum um, I've been beating for a really long time. Yeah. You know, is that, you know, and I wrote it in my book, you know, a guide number is no guide to buy a strobe on. Yeah. You know, you need to understand the quality of light and, and, and that sort of thing. And it's great that, you know, three or four years later, that's really percolated through to the manufacturers. I was super excited by what I saw at Dima last year. I, and I've been frustrated this year. I've not got to try all those strobes. I, I have a pair of, one, uh, of, 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 um, of, Seacam 160s here on the shelf, and you know I've been underwater them a handful of times, and it's it's um it's it's very frustrating. Um, yeah, I think, and I, and I wouldn't want to try them in the UK. I you know I want to go yeah, somewhere, somewhere in the conditions they're really designed for yeah. and see how they perform. But hopefully soon. Soon. soon yeah. Soon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so I think the, the the next thing is probably optics because there's been some fairly revolutionary new optics. Um, again, well, I, I think th it's sorry. Yeah, I, I sorry think, to butt in, I, think, I think this is something that that probably we have um, to some extent these have been announced or trailed certainly before but we're, we're finally seeing production and, and obviously the first the first one is the obvious one which is the Nauticam EMWL um, the the um, yeah, I think I, I completely agree I think that this would be what underwater photographers are really talking about at DEMA yeah. I think there'd be a lot of you know, because a lot of these optics are very expensive and people would be really keen. Oh, you've used it. What do you really think? Yep. You know, it, I don't want to hear the I spent loads of money on this and therefore I'm going to tell everyone it's amazing. Or the dealer who's like, yeah, I shot it on a dealer's thing. And of course, I'm going to tell you it's amazing. Yep. I actually want to speak to real other photographers. You know, should I spend my money on this? Yep. And I think that's what everyone would be talking about. You know, whether it's WACP2s or whether it's EMWL1s, you yeah. know, it's that's I think what, where the, the banter would be yeah. is what are these things like to shoot? Yeah, I, I, and you know, I, I'm convinced that in a normal year we'd be seeing lots of images coming out using EMWL, for example, and, and people would go, yeah. look at that, I want to do that. I think there would be a real sense of, um, you know, because they do create very unique and, and, and you know, um, the, the the image quality is superb too. So I think I think the the show would very much to be talking about EMWL. Um, I, I, what I like, as we said, you know, we talked about it a lot, but I, I, I love how well thought out it is as an underwater photography product. Yeah. It's not just an amazing piece of optics. It's you know the way, the way it, it's very usable. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I think. Sorry. So so other other obviously the other one that was released and would undoubtedly be getting some attention is uh, is uh, WACP two. 
Um, mm-hmm. And I would imagine that that by this point that Nauticam are busy cooking up some uh, different lens combinations that have been used with it. Um, you know, possibly with um, and 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 seeing how it works with different lens combinations, and and, mm-hmm. and that would be very interesting as well because you know it's an amazing it's an amazing piece of piece of glass. So I'm sure mm-hmm. we'd be seeing some interesting stuff. I think that the particularly I think it was the the 14 to something zooms that the both the mirrorless camera Canon and the mirrorless Nikon have the, the 14 to 30 on the Nikon. Um, that was a really great lens behind it, and yeah, um, yeah the, as I was saying before, the the advert that's currently on the front page of wet pixel for it is actually my shot taken with that lens. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, it was a delight to use. I have to say for me though, the WACP two is too big and too expensive for me. Um, I think if you're it's, I think it's main appeal is the really serious camera people, the camera operators from, you know, from proper, you know, you know, shooting, um, um, film, I think that you know it's an amazing optic. It's yeah. um, it's just it's a big old thing to try and live with as an underwater stills photographer. Yeah, the um, I know um, Mike Bartik over in the Philippines has been trying out a, a new lens from Kraken, which mimics the or seems to mimic the performance of the Nauticam MW or macro M macro to wide M two W lens, um, which can essentially it converts a sixty mil macro lens into a fisheye lens. Mm. Um, and um, I think Kraken's is very similar performance to the. They did have it on the stand last EMA, but I think it was a prototype, um, and, mm. and they now have it in some form of production. And so I'm sure people will be talking about that um, this year. And and then there's a, a, another um, Asian company, AOI, produce um, lenses both under their own brand and also um, produce them for Backscatter and for um, Fantasy, I believe. Um, mm. And again, they produce some very interesting lenses, and um, particularly for use with the the, the Olympus TG series. Um, you know, so so uh, that's the company that no one's heard of. Yeah. Yet almost everyone owns something made by them, rebranded by someone else. Yeah, yeah. And they I, make I, a huge amount of underwater photography gear for lots of partners. Who, yeah. 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 I I was just actually while while back backscatter reminded me. I'm sure the other tool a lighting tool that we didn't mention is the backscatter minis flash and that's now mm. you know we're seeing those out there in the wild as well um, and i'm sure that again would be attracting quite a lot of attention so so yeah. another, another completely different lighting tool and one that i really wish that i got to use this year but obviously didn't um, but uh, i would, I would, like I would say a lot of people who bought them have really enjoyed them yeah i think it's it, it's it's uh, what i like about it is, is the price point is almost a well Go on then. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I think it's, it's, it's exactly this sort of product. So as a product for underwater, to appeal to underwater photographers, yeah. um, not so much things, but to appeal to underwater photographers yeah. um, at a price point um, that, that you know most serious people can go, you know what, That's I can add that to my ex- existing kit. It's not a, oh, is this an upgrade? It's like, yeah. no, I can just have that as another accessory. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's a very clever product from that perspective. Yeah. And its usability has made a lot of people very happy. Yeah, and, so, and it's, it's light and small. You know, it really is something you can carry in addition to your usual kind of setup yeah. um, and, and use it for specific shots. I, I'm conv- and I think, again, you know, it's got creative potential that, that, that I'm sure I haven't thought of yet. Um, and I'm mm-hmm. sure that other people will have. So, so it'd be interesting to see what people have been doing with them. Um, yeah. I'm sure GoPro would have been at Dima with a yeah. big stand, and they've got is it, is it is it the nine now they're up Hero to Hero Nine, yeah. So they've got Hero Nine that's out now, and and there is associated housing. So obviously the GoPro produce, uh, uh, I think it's a 60 meter rated housing that that the camera itself is relatively waterproof, but then they also produce a housing which, to be honest, if you're diving with it, you need it. Um, and then you know I'm sure that also the the Eyes also certainly produce housings. Easy Dive produce housings um, for them um, in the past. I think Subar have produced housings. So I'm sure there would be a, a crop of, of of more serious housings for the for the Hero Nine. Um, mm. By all accounts, again, the Hero Nine is very very good. And um, going to the other end of the video scale, possibly momentarily, the other sort of quite big news is finally the Red Komodo is actually. It, achieve production it's been that there are a lot of units out there that were pre-production units it was almost like it was almost like it was a it wasn't really pre-production unit but it was 
Um, and, and so Komodo is now being seen off by my dogs. Um, but um, but uh, it's out there. And again, you know, we're seeing housing. Certainly Gates have a housing out for that. These are the big cinema camera um, mm. housings. So Gates have a housing out for it, um, as do... There's someone very undeserved. Yeah, it must be, it must be trying, someone trying to sell a housing. Um, as do um, Nauticam have a, have a, are supporting Komodo as well. Um, mm. so, so there will be, and there probably will be others too, but certainly they're two of the, 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 the major sort of housing manufacturers that are supporting the, 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 big, the big camera housings. Um, yeah, I mean, other news, I think Inon um, surprised us all slightly by releasing a, a viewfinder specifically for Nauticam housings. Um, they've done that relatively recently, so I'm sure um, my friend Takuya Tori would be wandering around the show with, uh, with samples of that, showing people that. Um, and that certainly is quite an exciting thing. Um, mm -hmm. I believe they they still produce a hundred hundred percent view of the viewfinder. Um, and and it, as is always though with Inon at these events, you know, uh, Takuya would have something tucked away in his back in his in his proverbial back pocket um, that he'd produce, and you go, what's that? And then he'd show you and think, oh, that's a really good idea. So so that's typically what happens with Inon. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, and that that certainly would be, be adding to the buzz um, um, of the show. I, I do think next year though, people will really enjoy. You know, assuming by this time next year, Dima's on and everything is returning to some sort of normality as as vaccines and things get rolled out and, you know, um, provided a level of protection within in society that allows people to 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 travel and move around much more freely again. Mm -hmm. I do think the underwater photography, photography community will really enjoy gathering together again mm -hmm. at the, the, the wet pixel party, the image makers party. I mean, it's such a popular event. And I think because of being starved of that social interaction for all this yeah. time and, and um, alcohol. Um, I think people will really enjoy, um, enjoy that. So I think that'll be something that will be next year's Dima. The buzz will be a lot about, about the excitement of seeing each other again, because people are really used to seeing each other, you know, quite regularly. And it will really feel a long time since everyone's seen each other come next year. I think particularly for, for sort of, uh, People that are a bit, a bit, well, I'm sure it's true for everybody. But, you know, the guys in the states. The states is a big place. People don't see each other very often mm. outside. Of, people gather at Dima, um, and, and Dima is as much a social function as it is a business one. I think mm. it's quite an expensive party, really. But but still, um, and, and events like the the, the uh, Wet Bills or Die Fighter Gun Image Makers Party. You know, I've, I've always held. You know, if you let a bomb off and they're making a living as a as an underwater photographer, it would get a lot easier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um so so yeah we'll we'll miss it um i I'm, I'm sure you know the, the the stuff that alex and i have talked about in this episode is not definitive and i'm quite sure there will be surprises um in store for us as and when we can meet or as and when the press releases come out for new products um, mm. um and you know we'll obviously continue to talk about anything new that crops up um here on wet pixel live as and when it happens um, Absolutely. I mean, we were kind of, you know, wanted to talk more about what, you know, the buzz would probably be on the floor. There's always something that comes out of the woodwork you don't know. Yeah. And I guess also if there was something out there that Adam and I did happen to know about now, but also knew we weren't allowed to talk about, we wouldn't be allowed to mention it in this episode. So, yeah, there uh, you go. So yeah. you have to come back and watch the next episode when we'll, we're allowed, are allowed to talk about it. Thank you very much, Alex. That's um, it's been great. Um, I'm, I say I'm, I'm sorry I'm not reporting live from New Orleans, but um, I'm sh one day perhaps. Um, and um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Um, please feel free to leave comments um, in the comment section or drop us a like if you enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you again soon.